it's everything. Luck, skill, science, uh, having the drive to go out and do it. Right now, they're hitting Earth every day on KSL Plus. Some of them are more expensive than gold. Here's a window showing the interior of where it hit the ground and broke. A flash of light and a sonic boom. And the fact that it was heard does make it a lot closer than most meteors. Experts say it was a meteor that shot across the sky on the morning of August 13th. The flash, wait, 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 boom. Scattering meteorites in northern Utah. Wow, this was in outer space. I'm Matt Rascone, and this week... Ahead of the Artemis 1 launch, KSL photographers jumped in Chopper 5 and took to the sky. With longtime meteorite hunter Sonny Clary. With this tr uh, trajectory coming in, it wasn't a steep angle, it was a slight angle to where this fireball could have easily continued over this mountain range over here. That's what we're hoping for today. Hopefully, we can get into it. Uh... Well, my first day, I kind of there's a return off to our right. I went and hit that for. 20, 30 minutes and then tried to come out onto the salt flat and was unpassable Then worked a different way and went to the spit that you call it and um, uh, the return is right over the top of this sand spit and the meteorites were basically right underneath it. You know, it was like, a, how would you say, like a white parking lot and a black golf ball and there was like, you could see it from 30 feet away. Not too, there was hardly any rocks at all or debris on the shore and uh, you would see that. I'm sure many are buried in the mud over here. They'll be lost, but they were so obvious. Right, and uh, the problem we were worried about is the shoreline to where they would punch in and uh, you'd never see them again. And we found some impact holes over here, which we thought and we dug them up and they were nothing, but as soon as you dug it, four to six inches, it would fill with water pretty slow. A lot of videos circling on social media showing that object flashing across the sky. The most likely explanation we're told is that a meteor possibly broke up and scattered before hitting the earth. And if you happen to find a piece of that meteor, it could be worth tens of thousands of dollars. We had walked all this over here down below us. Yeah, I know this guy here. Uh, there should be another guy with him, Robert Ward, flying on his little bike. And see how this works is we all work together, but it's your team against my team, and uh, everybody's trying to get the golden nugget at the end. And uh, and so some secrets are left, you know, to the crew, and then after the hunt they kind of share them, but it's bragging rights. That guy right there. Uh, it looks like a like a, a piece of wood or something. That's what I would guess that is. But that's how it's going to sit out here. How about that little black spot over there? Could that be uh, maybe anything? No, that's more of that wood. Right through here, right down below us was one of the first finds were made. And I would say numerous finds are probably in the sand, but the sandbar along here is just very soft, you would sink, you know, four or five inches. I would just do a beeline towards that Morton Salt Hill there. You know, this could be possibly a mile and a half wide in here, but we rode both shorelines. We've, you know, scoured it, but we didn't get in here and dissect the grass. I would, you know, guarantee there's many more in here. Right below us is a, the problem here too is there's a, some kind of tar or where it come from, I don't know, or pieces of rubber that decayed that would mimic a meteorite until you picked it up and go, oh, this is the wrong piece. But this would be the small end, 100, 200 grammers. That hasn't happened in Utah since 1950 in Garland. When you hear the explosion, that's when the meteor 
blew up and went into fragments. One that brought Sonny and fellow meteorite hunters here to the Tooele Valley. So it's like, once I saw that, it was like, oh my God, I found it. And as we recovered the pieces, they were all, you know, 50 to 100 to 200 grams. And now out two miles was a 400, possibly 400 gram. And we're hoping if we go out another six miles to be in the 800 to kilo size pieces. You can see the circles here where we found one. Here's a guy up here, two guys walk, three guys walking. Yeah, see this is very dangerous. This is probably one of the dangerous hunts I've been on because right now we've got cool temperatures, but they still got a three mile hike back to the car. You know, these are gonna be kind of hard to spot right here. These are gonna be little. I doubt you're gonna get anything over three, 400 grams out here. Anything's possible though. I think we get across the road there where them, hopefully them little logs will be laying out there. But you'll be able to see the impact pit uh, round hole with debris, you know, a foot in front of it, right. The one that was found over there yesterday was, it had hit, shot the dirt out, and then meteorite actually rolled backwards, you know, two or three feet. Oh yeah. That's the best part about the hunting though, is like, you know, meeting the people. This is different where we get a fall back in Texas or Kansas, you go door to door, get permission and talk to them and uh, you're doing what? Looking for what? Okay, meteorites and then we we're on a, on a hunt in Texas and the guy, meteorites, and he looks at me and looks at my partner and goes, you know, I think I got a box of them in the barn and we're like, oh crap. So we follow him out to the barn and we're like looking out there and this guy's, you know, he was harmless, but it's like, that's the time you want to run. The scary music should come on in. <laughs> yeah, so you walk in the garage, it's meticulous, and up on the wall is a box of meteorites. He pulls it down and goes, hey, you can take one. I go, well, let me pay you for it. And uh, he wouldn't take no money, so I cut it in half, polished it, and sent it back to him. But I've got the pictures. It was like a neat little story. Right, if we could head towards where that truck is over there that's crossing that road. See here now, if we could see an impact crater right here, this would be right in line. Just look for a big old splat out there. Oh, it's like you'll be out walking or driving, you'll see something out there like, oh, there it is, and you run out there and it'll be a piece of rusted metal or something, and like, oh, crap. And even though Clary says he's found hundreds of meteorites over the last two and a half decades. It is neat. Hunting them has never lost the thrill. Wow, this was in outer space. This is 4.5 billion years old. It was witnessed, the sonic booms, the whole event. And then I have a piece. I can't say how many times, you know, you get skunked, but that's just part of the game. That is, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But what a great hobby to come out, explore, and uh, spend time outdoors. This right here, the adventure, coming out to somewhere I've never been before, walking around, just enjoying the nature, the outdoors, and then looking for a space rock that's, you know, the chances of finding it are really great, and it's just the hobby. It's, it's kind of like, you know, you have deer hunters or bass fishermen, or it's just that love to get out and look, and even if you don't find anything, you still had a great time outdoors. You got to come out and have fun, and, uh, to see nature, I've come, you know, stumbled across, you know, native camps that were untouched and, you know, found a couple of mammoth, woolly mammoths. Let's head over to the left here. I found a uh, roughly 216 gram chondrite meteorite. So far, six stones believed to be part of the 800 pound meteorite. How big would that be? You figure a foot and a half round object. So dense, when a meteorite hits the Earth's atmosphere, it explodes into hundreds of pieces. Here's a window showing the interior of where it hit the ground and broke. So I turned all these in and, you know, to help out the universities, you know, the universities can't afford to put people out here to where, gosh, I don't mind spending you know, a thousand, fifteen, two, you know, two thousand dollars to come out here. Some of them are more expensive than gold. You, little did you know, you just walked past a fifty thousand dollar rock.
it's not about selling them for Sunny. The main goal is for science, to see it to go to science, to share with the world. But what's neat too is the university here is gonna study the meteorite, classify it, and hold you know the type specimen. It'll be here forever. The University of Utah is now verifying whether many of those rocks are meteorites. That does it for us this week on KSL Plus. I'm Matt Rascone. We'll see you again next week.